All right, here's our little male Bowens python. It changes water bowl. So I figured, say hello to him. We haven't seen him in a while. He's looking really nice. Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And uh, guys, we didn't have a video all week, so I gotta hit you with one. I took a bunch of stuff today and uh, I'm excited to show you. We had actually had a clutch hatching in the process of hatching in the incubator. We're gonna take a look at that. Plus we're gonna take a look at some cool boas and some of my other really cool snakes in my collection. This will be a fun one, stay tuned. All right, we got another clutch hatching here. We're in the middle of it hatching at least. And it looks like we hit a bunch of really cool looking rainbow stuff. Um, I think we might have a, a dead one here in this egg. I'm not sure, I just cut the egg open. I see a head sticking out there. This was a Hypo Super Hurricane Enchi Rainbow being bred to an Enchi Hypo 100% Het Rainbow. So we're gonna see a lot of Enchi stuff. We're gonna see everything's gonna be Hypo here. As you can see, these are, these are not visual rainbows. This is, but these are hypos, uh, probably hypo enchies. Uh, we see, I see hurricane here, hurricane here. So these hypo enchi hurricane, these are, these are gonna be 100% het rainbows. Um, this looks like it's a 100% het rainbow. That's a rainbow head sticking out there. That's a rainbow head sticking out there for sure. And we have a rainbow in here. I think they might be moving around in there. We'll have to see if it comes out. It, look, it looks hurricane rainbow to me. Obviously, everything's going to be hypo as well. So, we'll see. This one's still in the egg. Probably absorbing its yolk sac. This one's really the only one that's out. There was another one that was a rainbow, really beautiful. And it just, it wasn't, it was a little malformed. So, it didn't make it. Um, but, this one's looking really nice. So these guys are looking really good. Um, it's hard to tell what's in them. They're going to be hypo rainbows with the, the might be entry or not, or this hurricane. We'll have to find out. And I will keep you guys updated as this hatch continues, this clutch continues to hatch out. All right. Here's our little male Bowens python. It changes water bowl. So I figure say hello to him. We haven't seen him in a while. He's looking really nice. One of my favorite snakes I got from my good friend Jason Ha huh? a bunch of years ago. At some point we'd like to breed him, but not yet because his girlfriend is still not old enough. He's old enough. He's looking really good. This, this guy is uh, a 2018. He's got some good size on him. Very, very friendly snake. Loves to play and come out. And Look at this boy. What beautiful blacks. I and mean, he actually looks like he's going to shed soon, but beautiful snake. Keep him nice and trim. We don't want to overfeed this guy. They don't breed if you overfeed them. And there's his girlfriend. She's got her adult colors now. She's still tiny, though. She's not even close to breeding size yet. She's only about three years old, or she's just about to turn three years old. So. Hopefully we can get her up to size in the next two years or so. And the older they are, the better chances that we're gonna get them to breed. And here she comes. <laughs> Look at that beauty. What a beautiful face. Once again, Boland's Python is very rare to get them to breed in captivity. Not many people have been able to do it. And uh, that will be a, a long-term goal of mine. There's our annulated boas or also known as Corallus annulatus. And we have a female with two males in here. They seem to be breeded better in those triads. And I've been just, they've been just cohabitated for the last couple of years. They're uh, going on six years old. I, I thought maybe this year they might breed. I may have to start feeding them a little bit more. I think we've been underfeeding these guys, but once again, I always find the tree boas do better when they're underfed. I, they could be, they might be locked now, I don't know. So we'll see. They're really kind of interesting to observe. They really, uh, they do hang out. Very rarely do I find them on the ground. They're always hanging up in one of these 
artificial branches we've <laughs> built them. And so they definitely like to crawl and climb. At night, you come in here and they're all, they're like all over the place. During the day like now, they're just sleeping. All right, here is my super mandarin belly leopard. <laughs> I'm not happy right now. And I'm gonna be selling this girl. She's a proven breeder. If anyone's interested, you can reach out to me. She's gorgeous. So it's two copies of the mandarin belly gene. And then she's obviously got two copies of leopard because that's a recessive trait. So she's a double homozygous animal. Really beautiful. Look at those beautiful reds. There's no hypogene in there. That's just the mandarin belly and leopard. And the mandarin belly definitely brings out more reds than that leopard. She's nice size. She definitely, uh, she's about seven years old and she's produced litters before. So let me know if anyone's interested and we can make a deal. All right, IMG Sun Glow, that's Sharp Sun Glow. So it's IMG gene, increasing melanistic gene, which increases melanin. There's no melanin in this snake. <laughs> There's no plaque left because it's albino, Sharp Albino, with, along with the hypogene. But you can see the pattern is much more well-defined because of that IMG gene. And she was bred, I think successfully. She's been sitting on the hot spot. We bred her to fire, labyrinth, head VPIT positive. So we can really produce some really cool stuff, hopefully. We're looking for that fire labby hypo, which will be head for sharp albino and possibly head for VPIT positive. So a lot of potential here. This will be her first litter if, if she has one. I'm looking forward to seeing what we produce. And a little update on our Sanzinia, Velotny, Madagascan, Madagascan, brown boas. Beautiful, beautiful snakes I got from Crutchfield a couple years ago. Still haven't moved them into the bigger cage I want to put them in, but they'll be going there very shortly. And love these guys. Super, super cool. Can't wait to see them moving around in a little more of a luxurious enclosure. I think they're going to be super, super dynamic in there. And I think we're going to start feeding them a little bit more, get them up to size. Now that they've gotten through that little bit of a infantile, you know, vulnerable stage that they've usually go through initially. Beautiful snake. There's my rhino rat snake, Mel. Beautiful little boy in the water dish. And his splendor. I don't know. Been hanging out in the water bowl a lot lately. Maybe we gotta humidify his cage a little bit more. Beautiful little boy. There's a beautiful jungle hypo motley. Double het VPI snow, which is double het for VPI T positive and anery. And it's of the White Walker line. And this little girl, I've been growing her up since 21. So she's about three years old. She's looking super, super beautiful. I, I think I have someone who wants to buy her though. So she might be leaving my facility. She's absolutely beautiful. Great coloring. I mean, she almost looks like she's visual VPIT positive, but obviously the saddles don't say that. But she's just got some great pastel line in her. And like I said, she might be leaving the facility. And we'll end today with a little beautiful IMG Hypo Labyrinth boa. One of my favorite combinations. You can see all the darkness coming in uh, on the labyrinth pattern from the IMG gene, the increasing melanistic gene. But that hypo gene and the labby gene fight that IMG gene. So you're never gonna see a completely dark animal. And But every time I keep showing this little boy off, this is actually a boy, um, you see more and more darkness coming in. Just not, never gonna like saturate his body. That's the whole thing. You're just gonna get more and more detail in his, in his labyrinth pattern. And that looks cool to me. It just makes him look more 3D, more, contrast in there and that's just what makes a great looking snake so he'll be in the breeding program this coming season at the end of the year he's going to be three and a half years old he'll be perfect for breeding and hopefully we can produce some really nice stuff from him if anyone is interested i think i have 
think he may be in, I think I have two, so I think he may be available. Let me know if you are looking for a good breeder boy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. You got to see that rainbow clutch in the process of hatching. Actually, the uh, the father was actually a super hurricane, and she hypo rainbow, which is what we call the ultraviolet. So all those babies are... Look at that. Look at that. We got a rabbit. Look at a rabbit. Look at that rabbit. Coming up to me. Look at this. Can you believe? What's up, big boy? <laughs> you want to be part of the video, huh? I've never seen a rabbit come up to me. Wow. What are you doing, big boy? Hi. Come here. Come here. I've never seen a rabbit do this ever before. I hope you guys can see it. This is unbelievable. It's a little baby. Yeah. How you doing? You want to be on film? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, you, you want to be in the video, huh? This is a wild rabbit. This is not a, a tame rabbit. This is just a wild rabbit in my yard who's just coming up to me. All right, well, pretty cool. A lot of wildlife here in Florida <laughs> all the time. You never know what you're going to get. So, that rainbow clutch was amazing. Uh, once it hatches out and sheds, I'll show you all the great stuff we got in that clutch. If anyone's interested in some rainbow stuff, I have some really good rainbow stuff. And I know you know that probably I have the healthiest rainbow stuff out there. A lot of people just don't have outcross rainbow stuff. I do. This rabbit's coming right up to my feet. This is crazy. I <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed the rhino rat snake. It's looking awesome. And some of the other cool stuff I have, the Bolins. And uh, I think we're going to get some more boa litters this coming week. I have a, I have a itching sensation. A lot of people are getting boa litters now. We had that one, but I think there's more coming. So next week should be exciting. Uh, if you guys are enjoying these videos, show us the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. I'll see you again next week.